Brilliance Audio presents Good Manners for Nice People Who Sometimes Say F by Amy Elkon. Performed by Carrington McDuffie. Getting the Rude Out We can't turn back the clock to a world where we all live in small villages and everybody knows everybody and the blacksmith. What we can do is take steps to recreate some of the constraints and benefits of the small groupings we evolved to live in. This may sound like an enormous undertaking, but it's actually not. In fact, we could dial back a lot of the me-first, screw-you meanness permeating our society if we do just three things. Stand up to the rude, expose the rude, treat strangers like neighbors. Most people aren't comfortable standing up to the rude. That's totally understandable, because humans didn't evolve to be around strangers when someone we don't know is abusing the rest of us, the course of action suggested by our genes is something along the lines of page not found. There are some people, however, who can't help but say something on behalf of the group or another person they see being taken advantage of. I'm one of them. An economist speak, I'm a costly punisher, someone who gets outraged at injustice they perceive and is compelled to go after wrongdoers, very possibly incurring some serious personal costs in the process. Say, for example, I ask somebody at the movies to stop yammering on their phone. They're unlikely to thank me warmly or cut me in on their lottery winnings. They may even stab me in the neck with a turkey baster, as did the boyfriend of a phone-yammering woman whom some movie theater patron in Orange County, California asked to pipe down. The patron survived, the turkey basters in an evidence locker, the slashers doing 40-plus years in the pen. Costly punishment has yet to be that costly for me, maybe because I'm a good judge of character, or maybe because I'm just lucky and a fast runner. The truth is, I don't speak up to just anyone. If somebody being rude looks armed or crazy, I curse them silently and wish them a bad case of genital itching. But in general, my ire at the rude, blithely taking advantage of the rest of us overwhelms my fear of being gutted with a kitchen implement, and has ever since I started looking at rudeness for what it really is. Theft. If somebody steals your wallet, it's a physical thing that's there and then gone, so you get that you've been robbed. The rude, on the other hand, are stealing valuable intangibles, like your attention in the case of cell phone shouters who privatize public spaces their own. When somebody parks straddling the two spaces behind the dry cleaner, forcing you to drive around and hunt for a spot at a meter, they're stealing your time and peace of mind. Rude neighbors who blast music at 2 a.m. are stealing your good night's sleep and maybe even your life and others should you drowse off behind the wheel and take out a school bus. Letting the rude get away with robbing you emboldens them to keep robbing you and the rest of us. We all need to start identifying the rude as the thieves they are, which is what it will take for more people to get mad enough to get up on their hind legs and refuse to be victimized. Exposing rude behavior to a wide audience is particularly important. In the modern strangerhood, when someone's abusing a person or group of people they don't know and won't see again, concerns about what it will do to their reputation are pretty much moot. We can change that through a form of positive shaming that I call web slapping, yanking away the anonymity of the rude by discreetly shooting a photo or cell phone video of them in action and uploading it to the internet. Yes, ironically, the road back to the civility of the 150-person village goes straight through the global village. Web slapping is typically the best solution when somebody's egregiously rude, when whatever they're doing reflects such a sense of entitlement that asking them to be more considerate will likely only result in their acting more rudely out of spite. Even if the particular rudester never learns of their ignominious star turn on the internet, the fear of being similarly exposed should deter other rude people from acting assholishly to the rest of us. We may have lost the built-in peer pressure of a tiny world of people who all know one another, but there's a new sheriff out there, and it's the YouTube video gone viral. Of course, most people probably aren't going to shoot and post a video, but there is something we can all do, and that's to make a daily effort to treat strangers like neighbors. Smile at the guy passing us on the sidewalk, say hello to the cashier, do the small kindnesses that we would for somebody we know.
Once you start, you'll see that this not only makes other people feel good, but makes you feel good too. As I explain in detail in the final chapter, Trickle Down Humanity, it turns out that it's actually in our self-interest to do kind acts for others. Research by positive psychologist Sonia Lubomirsky suggests that being generous to others is one of the main ways, along with expressing gratitude, that we can increase our happiness. Showing another person a little generosity of spirit is also likely to put them in the spirit to pay it forward to people they encounter, and so on, and so on. The way I see it, a bare minimum of one kind act a day should be our self-imposed cover charge for living in this world. We get the society we create, or the society we let happen to us.